Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and today we have part one of a special two-part episode where we discuss the Holy Week services and our Easter resurrection messages. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to the post-game wrap-up for <laughs> Easter. That's a great way to put it. Holy, I, maybe because I've been watching a lot of March Madness, uh, which I never yeah. do, but this this year because my beloved Alabama Crimson Tide are actually in the Final Four. Uh, yeah. I've been watching a lot of you po- watch them now. A lot yeah. of post-game wrap-ups. Yeah. Man, the games are so stinking late. I thought the football games were late. Yeah. These games don't even start. They don't tip off yeah. until nine get o'clock. The whole, anyway. Get the whole country to think of. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the post-game uh, pr- press conference. Then. Post-game yeah. press conference wrap-up about. Uh, uh, the most important week of yeah. the the year, um, yeah. not just for our church, but for the church, th- for the church, and 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 as you, I think, aptly argued, uh, I was argued is not the right word, uh, aptly put it in your sermon, really for the whole world. I mean, yeah. even, even for non Christians, because yeah. it, it it did change the world, mm-hmm. um, and it changed the zeitgeist and everything. But before we get into Easter Sunday. I do want to go back, and uh, we talked uh, a bit by way of preview. We talked last week about the Holy Week services, yeah. um, about w- what we do. But that was Tuesday of last week, and yeah, it was a, it was a teaser. It was, it was the trailer. Does it feel like it was further uh, longer ago? Yes. <laughs> I was just <laughs> yes, thinking it, it was just last Tuesday that we talked about everything yeah, before. Uh, but, I mean, last Tuesday three years ago. That's what it felt like, right? Uh, in a good way. I don't mean that negatively. Yeah. I, I it's think just it, a, we had a lot of we had a lot of moving parts, a lot of wow. things going on, a lot of a lot of emotional swings. Yes, um, and yes. that's and, a good way and, to put it. And just just a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah. So since just just so people understand that that maybe aren't part of our congregation or or maybe aren't part of all the different movements. Although I will say this. I saw a lot more people go through all the movements uh, yeah. with with us, um, which was super encouraging, and I, I will talk about that in a second. But so Palm Sunday, last Sunday, mm-hmm. which is it's a Sunday service, but it's there's more elements. Yeah. There, there's palms, there's kids, you know. Uh, then then you have Maundy Thursday, which mm-hmm. we did very differently. Mm-hmm. Prayer vigil between Maundy Thursday and yeah. Good Friday. Then a Good Friday service. Then on Saturday, we have... Uh, the gospel in a different form. We have a gospel in a different <laughs> form because we have the Easter egg hunt. And I'm, I'm glad you put it that way. It is the good news, yeah. right? It, one, because we actually do a resurrection That's it, drama. Yeah. But then there's something that you that we really emphasized, and you really emphasized in the Monday Thursday service. We got to see that in a, in a fun way. On Saturday, because there was this oh, yeah. community, community environment yeah. that love one another. I think really, I, what at least when I was there on Saturday morning, I was feeling the joy filled side of the yeah. love one another thing. So we had that big big morning, and then Sunday services on Sunday, which we had an extra one. We have a six thirty service, yeah. and then all the other services are all the extra are the extra elements and the attendance. Every, yeah, it, it's it's definitely dial to eleven, right? Yeah, this dial, one goes to eleven. Dial yeah. to eleven. <laughs> this one goes to eleven. Uh, and, and we try Refer- to we, reference to Spinal Tap, right. in the movie, a super holy and righteous <laughs> yeah. movie. Um, like, right. But it's uh, but it is a it, it it's a lot. It's a lot of movements and a lot of a lot of joy, but also like you said, uh, emotional swing downs. So I want to talk a, a, just a little bit. We can't spend an inordinate amount of time on each service, but we talked about Palm Sunday, obviously, already, but let's talk about Maundy Thursday. We did it differently this year. Explain that to folks that maybe weren't here. It was your idea to move it into Loudon Hall. Yeah, we were toying with different different ways to do Maundy Thursday. There's a sort of a right out of the Book of Worship straight up classic service type, type way to way to do that <clears throat> but then there uh we talked about us having a seder meal together and do, doing something like that we wanted to do something different with that this year so we moved it in, into loudon hall put round tables out and had everybody uh take communion around the tables which you organized that which is great uh great great way to do that uh but we also wanted to have them pray together at the table so you couldn't really do that the same way yeah. In the sanctuary, so the the the, it, the space lent itself for it, and as it turns out, there's more of an after the afterwards, and we as we talked about this morning at the staff meeting, is that uh, it turned out to be a great 
balance uh, for yeah. our church where we have a modern side of the house and a classic side of the house that we're able to bring the the, the modern side, side of the house got to be a feature for uh, what has been traditionally a classic uh, type of type of service but even in the modern side of it they did it with a with a with a with with the, with a sensitivity and awareness yeah. of it was still very oh, sober it was right. it was sober and it was also um it had some of the great hymnity mm-hmm. uh presented in different ways yeah and i think it was one song that was more, really oh, more of a modern yeah. Yeah. modern yeah. song yeah. but would... but even that was it felt like a hymn you know yeah. it's one of those pieces that, and then just the different elements of the of the day so, so we wanted to do something that had that Table table time, which created the very thing you you led with, which is that the the relational mm-hmm. feel around it. You're in a community of people sitting around a table. Where do you sit around tables? Yeah, you yeah. do it at home. You're yeah. a family. And I really and that was in and, and, and that was really uh, as I'm thinking back to the planning of those services. That was really one of the motivations that you brought up in 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 moving the service into Loudon Hall so that we could be around tables because we this te- the the service is based on this text from John 13 where Jesus says to love one another yeah. as I have loved you well it's it's harder to love to to I think this is the way you put it in your and, and it, one of the things that it, it, we decided not to do is to record it right, right. Um, I kind of wish we had just so people could I think for people that missed it to even just to hear the message, I think was would have would be helpful for people because I I think it's harder to embody the loving one another when you can't see one another and and in a sanctuary space, yeah. uh, and it's not bad. It's just by default you cannot see. Yeah. Or, to say know, it, or to say it the other way, it's easier to think about loving that person when you can see them yeah. and when you're looking at them around a table. Yeah, and I, I thought that was a powerful motivating factor yeah. for that service being in there and, and then being able to share communion, being able to share prayer times. I mean, that was really, really uh, – and there were – I think it was a much higher attendance than we've had at previous Monday yeah. Thursday services. I think even some traditional folks who normally wouldn't go to a Monday Thursday service came yeah. to because it was different. And to hear those very same traditional classic folks saying this was a powerful, very singular powerful. moment in, yeah. in life. So I'm so glad I was here, and I'll yeah. come back next year. Yeah, and and obviously there was a lot more folks from the Vine service that was there than than typically would have been there, and as a result, Good Friday they they came to Good Friday. Many of those folks came to Good Friday yeah. because they they under and which was in the sanctuary, more traditional elements. But even there, there was uh, you had commissioned one of our wonderful carpenter. Uh, Carpenter uh, yeah. artists, because I'm just gonna okay, call him a carpenter. Jim Hamer yeah. is much more than He's than a, a carpenter, right? Uh, not to steal the the title of Josh McDowell's book, but because yeah, <laughs> it's more d- than d- a carpenter. D- d- definitely different. But uh, he's an artist, quite quite. Yeah. quite uh, literally, and you had commissioned him to create this life size cross, yeah, which began in. Loudon Hall on Monday Thursday, and then was transferred. Yeah, brought it out at the very end yeah. on Monday Thursday, uh, and then brought it over to the to the sanctuary for for Friday. But uh, even that was a, it, it was the at the very beginning mm-hmm. talking about the fact that this cross was now a new element in the uh, in the room, brand new to our church, and it was life size, and you could just sort of feel the temperature of the room shift. Mm-hmm. Um, the, for and for for in a good way. This is that yeah. everybody was ready. To, to think about what Friday was all about, yeah, and that really that was a visual help to have that, and and one of the elements that carries over Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, which is something that we tend to try to avoid, is uh, silence. Uh, we tend to avoid those even in our normal worship services. We we tend to try to fill no the silence. Yeah. No dead air. We talk about that, but here the the intentionality of silence, yeah. the intentionality of quiet in both both Monday Thursday and Good Friday, I thought was really and that space between uh, with the the vigil. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. ask people to to find at least an hour in that twenty four hour period of time between the services to find space margin yeah. silence in their life. Yeah, and we had a lot of people. I mean. I mean Six, 50, 60 people who come through the in in twenty four hours to mm-hmm. to to pray for an hour. That's that's significant. Yeah, it it very much is, and 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 
a big uh, a big shout to to the team that put that together. You you had that that side up uh, quite a bit. And Susie Susie Stone was big uh, for, Stone, for helping yeah. that that happen. Yeah. Um, so Susie Renee Hawk, Abby Rada, yeah. um, they, that was the group that did that. So yeah. good, they did a great job. Yeah. And I think the people who went to that found it to be uh, very meaningful to have a even to have the space mm-hmm. in in life to do that. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because the chapel is often is, is open during the week. Yeah, for prayer. For prayer, yeah. But we directed everybody. We, we brought we brought attention to that, and we created a few extra elements in the yeah. in the prayer vigil itself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then move into uh, move into good uh, the 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 Good Saturday, Holy Saturday, whatever Holy Saturday, Holy yeah. Saturday uh, where it's it's not a service, but it, there are service elements. There's Easter egg hunt and a spring festival, and a lot of moving parts there. Uh, it's an outreach event. We use that very much as an outreach event for folks and a very, uh, very directed presentation of the resurrection story. Yeah. Um, and, and very, that, very meaningful for and, and age appropriate, meaningful, and the youth got to act it out, and and the very, uh, uh, the, the very uh, youthful y- young uh, Sam Carlton, who has this very close cropped uh, head of hair, yeah. a very short hair, got to be the. 70s Jesus hair wig. He got to wear that, and and if they do in fact get a new wig uh, for him, we, someone needs to bequeath that wig to Sam, so yeah, he yeah, can he, have it he, for future. He's got to have it for the future. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he, 70s parties. I'm or something. sure he will love to use it yeah. many many times over. But it's a it's you know it's a very it's very very effective though. Yeah, very effective and keep using that word too. I think I think the the entire Holy Week service from Palm Sunday through through the through 10:30. Uh, Class, it's services, classic buying services on on Easter. Every one of them were impactful and effective. Yeah, that's those are two words that just keep coming up. They were impactful yeah. and they were effective. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's because we it, there was a there was intentionality in the design of those services, but also in the communication about the, the those services. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that. Um, we have really tried to drive home is to try to build not just events or not just services, but in, but build with intentionality towards uh, towards the gospel and towards um, the 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 embodiment of the gospel mm-hmm. in in the community, and that that that's actually a work that happens weeks and weeks and weeks before, because even as we were announcing these services, talking about the importance of them, why we do these things, and and why we're moving Maundy Thursday into Loudon Hall. Th- those are all things we had to communicate with a, with a great deal of intentionality. Yeah. Um, and I, I heard people get that message. You know, I saw them get that message. Um, these are not just things that we do. We do these things for very specific very specific reason. So, um, and then you know, all of that leads to the Super Bowl of yeah. of Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, the the Sunday uh, that all other Sundays are 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 yeah. reminders of, right? So, prepping those, your thoughts on the the service itself, the services themselves. Well, I just couldn't. I said it a little while ago um, in the staff meetings. Just couldn't have been more uh, honored and pleased to serve alongside of uh, yeah. you and Paul and Jennifer and 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 Sam, and then just the choir and the band and mm-hmm. the the tech teams and the and the and I mean just the the people the the the, the facilities folks in this church every part of this was every one of these groups here they you know, we're, we're all pulling in, in the same direction we're all striving to do the same thing we're striving to do something really uh, wonderful something that is celebratory but uh, is also done with with great care and, and, yeah. and great great uh, high standards yeah. you know uh, great excellence you yeah. know um, in fact I in my in the morning live morning services I when I was welcoming everybody I said you know one of the things you need to know we're a community of love we do great mission we're serving 400 people you know kids food you know meal, meals being packed this morning but said so we're also a church that strives for excellence not mm-hmm. because we we want to feel good about ourselves but because of the kind of God we yeah. how we understand who God is Amen, yeah. and we believe God deserves this excellence yeah. in all that we do so all these things were done that the probably the standout thing for me this year was just the the, the way that we all were pulling in the same direction and everybody was striving to do something without with excellence 
so that the God we worship and God who is re- Jesus who was resurrected would just shine through everything that we were doing. So, and I felt like we, I, I felt like we did it. Yeah, top to bottom. And and and, and to your point, I mean, even even, uh, I I was really pleased and and humbled to be a part of that team with you, Sam, Jennifer, uh, Paul. But as you said rightly, the custodial staff. I mean, when when I talked to Lori Lewis, who's our new head head of uh, custodial, and 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 talked to Sean uh, Clark, who is our new maintenance maintenance, maintenance guy, uh, this is their first year doing it here. Um, there was a joy in their service. Yeah. I mean, and they had early mornings, many many early mornings, and many many late nights, from setting chairs up, taking chairs down, and they it was an all hands on deck situation. And they were really all hands on deck. I mean, they were there, but you could just tell they were doing it out of a sense of worship. That they look at that, they yeah. they understand the. It's not a job. Yeah, it is, it is a job. It's not first a job. Yeah, it's calling. Even in that, and and I I love that that for me when I was interacting with them, whether it was set, you know, well talking with Lori about the setup for for Vine, you know, uh, you know, you've got more folks, companies coming, we know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, folks that are uh, that are regulars that are once a monthers, twice a monthers, they're that's everybody's coming they're that day. They're, they're all gonna be there that day. But even she and I just talking about that, there's just this joy of that, you know, her 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 uh act of worship is to be able to think through those moments all the way to the setting of stages for for Easter sunrise and I they mean, had so much to do these so kudos much. to the to the facilities folks they had so much to do, so much uh, to do. they they had I mean, we had we had two weddings yeah, yeah it, beyond that it, two two weekends you know, the palm sunday the day before palm sunday was wedding and then the weekend prior to that you had the you had the wedding yeah. so uh so we had weddings um i don't think we had any funerals but we had events other we events got funeral we, we have funeral coming up i we mean got, that, that's yeah so it just it just, but through all of that it was cheerful cheerfulness they got it they understand this is the mission they understand it's part mm-hmm. of the you know like we talked about in staff this it's part of the job that you're going to be crazy yeah. going crazy during during holy week yeah. No matter how much planning you've done in advance, you do, at that point it's like a it's like a wedding. You got to all you you just have to execute at that point. Yeah. You got to do the thing that you've been planning for all those months, yeah. and that takes a lot of work. What you say that and and that kind of leads me into to this week. You know, it is a lot of planning. It is a lot of preparation. It is. A, how yeah. do you feel? Do you get the do you get the nerves still about the you know is it gonna is the thing that you've been praying for and prepping for is it is it going to come across is it going i mean because there's a lot that's there's a lot that's not that we that we don't directly do but, yeah. but there's a lot that we do we're responsible for it yeah, yeah we're you know uh, do you feel how how what is your emotional kind well, of frame of mind like especially in my role I, you know that in some ways the the session is the ultimate re- the authority here in this church but as far as staff work, staff work and leadership it's it's it all you know I'm I'm sort of hands on and touching and seeing and trying to shape and affect all, all of it and so you feel it in that sense but m- mostly uh, it just felt in the sense of um I know that this is this is big for the world and we we want to have a, an experience together as a congregation that is that is meaningful yeah. and just how how well will that go just and thinking through that and and this and, and this to be fair this week we this this holy week we also had the last week of a key staff member with mm-hmm. elena nicholas um mm-hmm. you know moving on and training somebody else we were doing we were doing interviews yeah. for her position so there were other elements that had not even seen that are going on uh beyond beyond the things that are seen so it was a, it was it, i will say it was a it was it was probably the hardest work week I'm thinking back. Is this true? It was one of the hardest work weeks uh, of of the entire time I've been a pastor. Yeah, wow. This past this past week. Yeah. Just just because of all the different extra elements yeah. we had. Yeah. 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 I get this. You know, I as many years as I've done um, Easter services and and done events like spring festivals and things like that. There, there's always this sense of we've done everything. You know, we. We're we've prayed through this. We you know really it comes down to giving it to the Lord and saying, okay, Lord, this is our offering to you, right? All of these different elements, all of these different movements, all of these things, and we're we're doing this to to put a megaphone to the gospel yeah. uh, in, in a in a in a greater way than we normally do. Um, 
but Lord, we're Presbyterian, you know, like we know if, if, if God doesn't move in the hearts of the people to show up, um, to be receptive, um, you know, we're, it's not up to us to, yeah. to do that. I mean, all we can do is be obedient and, and then let God do the rest. Like I always tell people about events, you know, we had gorgeous weather this past weekend, gorgeous weather. But it doesn't, you know, and always guaranteed that, right? I mean, and, and I always tell people, like, look, all I can do is be obedient, set the stage, but it's God's event. It's, it's, yeah. God's, it's God's worship service. You know, if we're, doing, if, we're, if we're doing this for the sake of the gospel, God, it's God's event. And if he doesn't want it to happen, he knows how to shut this down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is a, there is a tension in that, isn't there? There's, a, there's this, it, it is God's work, and God's going to bring who God wants to bring, and, 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 and God will cause what he wants to have happen in that time. That's, that's, that is a reality that we mm-hmm. understand and we recognize, and as Presbyterians, we throw our weight there. Uh, but there's also the other side of it, which is you have a job. Yeah. Oh. You know, you have a particular calling, and that calling is to lead some things to happen. So you work. Yeah. As, you, as we have sensed, this is what God would have us do, which is to, to worship him as the risen Lord on an Easter Sunday. Then you follow through on putting the, everything you've got, every resource, every mental resource, every energy, energy resource into making that happen. So yeah. you, you, we do a lot of things. Yeah. But in the end, we trust that it's God who's going to do the is going to do the ultimate things. Yeah, and that was uh, you, you do feel that. I, yeah, I felt that uh, last week. Yeah, and and I think you know, like you said, there's all these other background things. There's the just there's just the regular parts of being a a, a pastor or a person on staff, whether there's training or there's. Uh, you know, there, there, there are funerals, you know, funeral meet. Like last week, we had a funeral prep meeting. You, you, you've had wedding prep meetings all these you know, mm-hmm. these past weeks. But then you still have to focus on the message. Yeah. Because, again, as we you've pointed out many times, we are evangelical in the in the, the little E sense of the word, that the worship services, even though they're full of music and they're full of prayer and they're full of liturgy, they're, they're all there to elevate the mm-hmm. Word of God. That's our stream. That's our, yeah. that's our, that's our lane in the Christian church. Yeah. Yeah, and and we're not, which means we're not charis, charismatic. Yeah. Uh, it, although you know, none of these are mutually exclusive. Just means where the Where's main the thing is, yeah. and so it's not. We're not uh, eucharistic. We're not sacramental mm-hmm. in our in our primary emphasis. We're not, you know, charismatic in primary interest. In, 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 we're not more more um, uh, works. Uh, yeah. You know, work, works uh, righteousness yeah. in our emphasis. We are word emphasis. Yeah. and that puts a lot of. I don't know how you feel about it, but it put a lot put put a lot of weight puts a a lot of that weight on our shoulders in the preparation and the prayer life. That's what this podcast yeah. is all about. But it's yeah. we feel it. But it's not just the sermon that 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 same that same preparation weight and all that it, a lot of emphasis and prayer. Mm. It's not just about the sermon said, because for us it's about building out the entire service to accomplish that that megaphone to the word. Yeah, yeah. The word is the word, and the is the word, and the word proclaims is the word proclaimed. But the rest of the sermon does that. Does its work as well. The rest yeah. of the service rather does its work as well. So as you're looking at Easter Sunday, yeah. how do you approach just a general Easter Sunday message? <laughs> That's like, funny. Do, do uh, you have do for you ha- for years? I used to. Uh, I'm not sure this is where you, where you're going with this. For years, I used to say, "I want to give them the best show in town." Yeah. Not that's not literally what I mean by that, but I, w- I wanted to be so really just so special yeah. that they'll they'll want to come back but i i realize that that when you do something so big and then you come to the next sunday and it's not big at all yeah that and the, but they come back to the next sunday then i mean i know everybody sort of knows you're going to put out the your best china for the yeah. for the company that's coming over that that day but but then next next week you might not do the same same thing but i i've i've really wanted to to check that back some um even trying to preach the best sermon i could possibly preach you know i I want to do that every week yeah i strive to do that every week so that's i took the pressure off of trying to preach the best sermon i've ever preached on easter and and christmas and just said instead i want to be the most i want to be faithful every week and i want to be faithful this week this this easter sunday i want to be faithful to the to the text and faithful to where that text takes us and so that's that's how i think about it generally now yeah yeah and i realize that I'm, i'm you know there's there's a big crowd yeah um um and and I and that's going to be I just say that's now the, that's the setting for this week yeah like this upcoming week the setting is Youth Sunday yeah that'll yeah. be the setting for this week yeah so yeah and I and I you know I I think I told you on Sunday morning you know last week this week I wrestled with these 
these yeah. these messages because you know you, you do you do more than four Easter sermons um, you're automatically going back to the same texts or yeah. or similar texts. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, there there are other texts that talk about the resurrection. I think a couple maybe Corinthians all, passage. Maybe yeah, last, last year. The last year last we year. actually preached from the Corinthians yep. passage, but you do have to go back and reference the actual event itself, right? Yeah. Um, this year, because we had done the journey to journey to the cross series, we definitely knew where we were headed um, into you know past the cross through the tomb and into the empty tomb. So we knew that was going to be there. But I really wrestle with this because um, some of the things that we talked about last week with, with, with you've got four versions of Palm Sunday. You, you got four, I don't say versions, four perspectives on Palm Sunday. You've got four perspectives on the resurrection, you know, um, you have four perspectives on the crucifixion. So, w- w- or how much are you referencing others? And, yeah. and you did some in your message this week. You, you did referenced. Too, yeah. I, we, I did. We brought in Luke. Yeah, know, brought in Luke's the... passage a little bit. Uh, uh, but I, so I, and and I, I will say this for this is the podcast, so we can talk a little bit more about this. How do you go after? And you did some in your message. Um, the ver- I think there of all of the passages of scripture that are repeated. In all four gospels, this is the one that probably has the widest variance, right? Yeah. Because Mark's gospel doesn't mention Jesus there at all. Yeah. Which is why I land. I mean, I really was hitting that 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 part. John's gospel really does hit that Jesus is there, but at, but later, right? Supposing yeah. the gardener, uh, uh, you know, there's one mayor, you know, one woman mentioned in one gospel, and three women mentioned yeah. in Mark, and one one angel, one, one not named angel, but angel, one, two angels in Luke, and yeah. no angels in John, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, there are there are you know there are uh, in Matthew there are um, the soldiers and, and, and yeah, you know, not the yeah. other. So there's all these different things. What, what, like you dealt with it a tiny bit, but yeah. didn't really. But how do you think through that process for people? I mean, uh, before you're preaching, because you, at least I'm aware that when I start to reference the other gospels, there's going to be that person because there, there's the the likelihood is is raised on an Easter Sunday that there's a skeptic in the room. Yeah. That 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 likelihood is, yeah, is dialed up a bit, right? So they're going to hear that and say, "Well, wait a minute." No, the way, I, and I think so. How do you approach that? Yeah. You know, in your well, head? first of all, I, I would say I I really liked how you <clears throat> how you address the uh, not only the skeptic but the newbie mm-hmm. and someone who's brand new to the faith and maybe not even in the faith is in this room going. You guys are talking about a whole lot of stuff and they're really excited about it. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't understand a lot of it. I think that those those things help. I know I had a comment. Uh, towards the end in the live versions where I said, if you're here right now and for what, I think I might have said something in the recording as well. If you're here right now and you just doubt it and don't believe it, then um, I hope they give you, whoever brought you, gives you a good meal afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. So you just, first off, you got to acknowledge that there are people people out who are coming into the church that have nothing, no, no little about it. Then as far as the spread of the um, the, the four Gospels and the, and the detail, um, I think we had the same issue last week too. Mm-hmm. So Palm Sunday and Easter, we both, we, we all had, the, we we had the same issue, which is that four, four versions tell, or three versions have have different emphases. Mm-hmm. So what do you do with them? Mm-hmm. So you, so I, I felt the, the responsibility I felt, and the thing I felt was like build out enough to 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 acknowledge it, so that mm-hmm. for those who say, yeah, but but Luke's gospel says such and such, so have some line in there that says that they're all going to do different things. Yeah, here's why. Yeah. And yeah. here's some of the differences to, to tell you. Yeah. Now let's get to the point of it. That's yeah. that's how that was my thinking through that. I don't, yeah. I don't know what was that you as well. Well, a little bit. I had that in there. You I, did I, that. I had I had it. I I had more of it before I actually preached it. And I I mentioned this to you uh, Sunday after church as people were taking. This is another movement. We had photos on the front yeah. lawn with the thing, which is which is really cool. I mean, really cool. Uh, it's like it's like Disney line almost at, yeah. at certain points, yeah. right? Um, but I rewrote this message two full times and then a half time even that morning. Like uh, bef- I got here at five o'clock in the morning on su- at sunrise service and I was still making adjustments, which I, that's not me. I do not do that. Yeah. I do, I do not make 
day of yeah. adjustments. I that I have it done. Um, I want it in my head and done. But I was making adjustments all the way up until sunrise service, and then after that, that was pretty was much that, locked in. Is that a sign of a struggle? It was. It was a struggle. And 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 go back to what you were saying. I still feel a little bit of that pressure to to make it, and I always bring the the best that I I can every single week. But I think I my and this is a this is a this is a this is a spiritual uh, rough spot in my soul that I that I God was working on me on when on Thursday and Friday in those services to to rub that out. That's why it re, got rewritten again. Uh-huh. Um, was to and to 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 bring something impressive, right? And which is not it's not it's not a great motivation, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was there's, there's the honest. There's the honest preaching moment. Preacher moment. I mean, because yeah. we're human beings, and, and, right? And talk, show me a preacher who hasn't wrestled with that, yeah. and I'll show you a liar. A liar. A liar. A liar. <laughs> <laughs> because they do. And and here's the here's the thing. I And our best motivation for that, we really want to make do something great. For, yeah. Like the old Mother Teresa line, you know, yeah. she was asking somebody if they want to give to the to their cause. She said, do you want to do something beautiful for God? Yeah. So that's the best of motivation. That's that's our best motivation. Yeah. Our worst motivation is I, I want to be look, impressive. I want to be impressive. Yeah. Well, it was funny because I, uh, want t- t- a couple things got my head straight. One is doing the Monday Thursday service, doing the Good Friday service, and and feeling letting myself be be put under conviction. That was part mm-hmm. of it. The other thing is I went back and listened to, um, and I don't know how much you do this, and I'd never do this. I, like I went back and listened to two Tim Keller Easter sermons. Oh. And they're from like probably ten years, seven plus. seven to ten year distance between the two sermons, right? And I tell you, they were almost identical to one another. <laughs> I mean, he used the same illustration. I mean, that's not a knock. I mean, it's, uh, and I actually was like, you know what? He's just being faithful to the God. I mean, same illustrations, same basic points. I mean, I mean, I mean, almost down to like they were just, they weren't the same message, but he was preaching from two different passages of scripture, and he had this had very similar yeah. points, and that gave me a lot of comfort. Right, that gave me a lot of like, you know what? It's not about that. You, it's don't, a, have to, you don't have to reinvent something yeah. every, every every year. Yeah, don't don't have to reinvent the you don't have to reinvent the wheel either. And and I didn't. You can go back. I did not preach Tim Keller's sermon, no. I, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I did. No plagiarism here. There was no plagiarism there, but I did, uh, you know, get a sense of this is not about you, dummy. This is about the gospel, and go back to the you know, make sure you're going back to the gospel, mm-hmm. back to the gospel, back to the gospel, back to the gospel, and and uh, you know the points that I that I had that I was you know what I, I went back and said what are the points that I'm really married to uh, that I feel like God is really um, emphasizing here. Change of status. Change of status. Change of purpose. And that was the last, those two statements, the change in status, change in purpose, those are the last two mm. uh, insertions. Those were, That was the clarifying moment for me. Mm. Was like, it's like praying through. It's like, Lord, what is this really, like, like what is it? Because we had talked about, this is the idea about these words that change lives, yeah. this, the words that change the world, right? These yeah. two you know, uh, personal and 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 meta, right? That was a, kind yeah. of the the ballpark that we were playing in, right? And we had talked to talked a bit about that, mm-hmm. which um, we don't normally do. We don't yeah. normally do it, but that that was enough to say, okay, well, okay, well, that that helps me focus a little bit more on the language. But I wanted to do something with the characters that were in there, and how does it change their lives, and what's the shift that you see, and how does then that bring it back? So the change in status, change in purpose, those were where, really where I landed from a, an uh, an application standpoint, um, um, and that's when I felt like the sense of God saying, okay, that's what I want you to talk about. That's what I want you to say. What does the gospel do for people? I'm I'm curious to hear you talk a little bit about the um, since this is armchair preaching. Talk yeah. about the preaching moment. It, yeah, it's not only is it Easter Sunday, which is big big in and of itself, but you also had the sunrise service mm-hmm. and the regular you know ten ten thirty service. service yeah. And so radically uh, I, I, different I, I, places, I, right? I know. Yeah, I know because I was there for both. Yeah. I was there for one live for one on, and watched you on um, uh, on on the other. Um, they were different, but they were the same. Yeah, different but the same. Yeah. You had you had similar elements. You told the story of mm-hmm. getting up early and second cups of coffee and alarm yeah. clocks and all and, and all that. So you mm-hmm. told you you you, you and you emphasized the women and you and the wonderful contrast between 
Peter and and, and uh, Mary. Yeah. And you know both of their status changed. Both of them were given been purposes. They just sort of, sort of came at it from yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, you want to, you want to, you want. This is talk about preacher nervousness. Sometimes is when you stake a pretty major point on. Um, the the logical conclusion that's not explicit in the text, right? So this is where it gets tricky. Is Mary the mother of James, Mary the mother of Jesus? That's the part that is it's yeah. Mark makes it pretty clear it is. If you go through the entire weight of Mark's gospel, when you make all those those things, but that was the one part I was really nervous about because I'm like I suspect though that you had less you would have had less reaction to that than you would have for the collection of uh, existing or former Roman Catholics. Yes. Listen to you t- talk about the uh, the fact that, that Mary had other children. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, which I mean, I, I, nobody, nobody's come up and talked to me about nobody's, it. No, yeah, nobody's you didn't do that at Sunrise, but you did it at the 1030 service. Yeah, because I was thinking about you, actually, because I saw, because <laughs> I was like, that's a former Catholic, and, yeah. I know, and I know there were former Catholics in the Vine, oh, in yeah. Vine and I'm thinking, and I'm, and I'm sure there were at sunrise service as well too, yep. and I'm sure I gave more than one of them some major, major did you just heartburn. Say, did you just did you just say Mary had other children? <laughs> yeah, but we well, believe that. Yeah, right? we do. I mean, we 100 percent believe that. Yeah. I mean, we think that the Bible pretty clear about it. I mean, in fact, the Bible is very clear about yeah. it, right? Um, but yeah, so the the change in venue from and we've talked about this quite a bit from 8:15 to 10:30 in the classic service, yeah. and even and, and I would love to hear more from you a bit about the, the recording versus the 1030 you know how that swing moves yeah very different um, but it's it's there was enough well one thing to, that was similar is that I have Jennifer and Philip up there leading they're true they led very differently different songs um, God bless them they had a whole different lineup of music for for that versus and very different types of music I mean mm-hmm. uh, acoustic set versus a full I mean talk about a full band on Sunday holy smokes I mean I'd love to have been in the room for that oh my gosh um, so but that it did help that it was a similar prep, preparation voice there yeah um, and this is the first year I've done that you've done sunrise and then yeah. the classic service but n- oh wait first year first year first year first year period yeah Oh, it's it the first year for me. Oh, I didn't realize that. Who preached the sunrise before? Well, in twenty, the last time I did sunrise was twenty twenty one, and oh, that, we were only doing one, and we were only we were no, we did uh, we did, but it was it was. I can't we remember the who, same preacher. I think we didn't we didn't get back to our regular schedule in twenty one till twenty two. I think yeah, because yeah, we just we had one preacher on each weekend. Yeah, so the years that I've done sunrise, it has it has been Kenny. Um, that has done Easter and the other. So this, uh, is, a, this is the f- first time you've done both. I this is you. the f- yeah. It's the first you. time I've done both. This is the fourth year uh, I've done. Out of ten years, I've done sunrise four times. Yeah. Uh, f- fifth time uh, that like I assisted one other time. So I've done it every pretty much every. I've been there every other year. I uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a morning person. So if I'm not involved, I'm not. I'm usually here, but I'm not. Here, like <laughs> this is a, this is a this is a sunrise unique to outdoor uh, service moments. Here. Yeah, uh, t- tell us about the uh, the the sound tr- extra soundtrack that you oh. had, and how did you handle you handle yourself with the extra soundtrack? Okay, so this was so you you've, you've done sunrise before here. Yeah. And you've done many sunrises. I have. I we we used to. Or, I organized uh, seven or eight churches in Dunedin who would go out to the beach. Yeah. And we would do literally on the beach, and the sun would rise. Yeah. You know, we did a seven seven o'clock, and in, in you know you're in the middle of the service, and you see the sun rise usually up over my right shoulder yeah. as I'm preaching. Yeah. And you know, at that point, ain't nobody listening to me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> They're all watching the sunrise, so I just sometimes just stop and say, "Me too. I'm going to watch too." Yeah, but see, and that's a, that's actually very similar because what you have is you're dealing with when you're when, whenever you're preaching outside you're dealing with elements yeah whether it's humidity sun or you know in this case animals and we've had a, a stories where ducks come right up to to, uh-huh. to the stage they don't care that we're there yeah, 200, 200 our, our ducks people. are used to having people around yeah. feed them they yeah and they could care less i mean they'll be up in the trees this one we had a seagull a goal of some kind um, out on Lake Hollingsworth, and it was pretty loud. It's pretty loud and cr- consistent. Consistent. That's the part that because it's not that it it 
it ah, it's it's, ah, it's not ah, that it does that ah, it's that that it ah, did it ah, it like, was like a drum beat it was it, it, it went on and on i'm looking at my daughter and i'm sitting next to my daughter we, we're both grinning like we're we're, we're kind of that knowing grin like because we're watching you and back watching jennifer universe. going good luck that's right yeah. <laughs> well, good luck concentration yeah it was with your concentration. thankfully during the sermon it didn't really not much it yeah. did not it was it was we like a more, couple more of a yeah it was more of like a two or three and then it stopped two or three yeah. then it stopped but it was what part was it? It was during the, uh, was it during the prayer? Is it the pastoral prayer? Yes. That's when it was like, like a, like a, like an alarm. And in my head, I was thinking at first I was, it didn't, didn't register. And then I was like, man, that thing is, that thing is really going. It's like, it's like, it felt like it was competing with me. Like it, yeah. it felt like it was hearing me <laughs> and it was making like a comp. And so I, I, I slipped. This is one of those times where I did not have any prayer in front of me. I was praying extemporaneously. Yeah. So I I made a decision um, that week that I was not going to over prep the prayers for the sunrise service, which is not typical for me. Normally, I have a written mm-hmm. prayer for, mm-hmm. for any classic anything. Um, this time, I said, you know, nope, you're just going to get up earlier. You're going to be in a prayerful spirit, whatever, you know, you're going to be extemporaneous. You know what the message is. You know what the liturgy is. You know what the songs are. Uh, so I did slip something in there about nature, about the creation, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. agreeing with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I said yeah, something yeah. to that, to that effect there too. But um, so curious about <laughs> your to, speaking of the the different venues. You know, you have three different venues. Really, you have a, a recorded service, yeah. and then you have an eight fifteen, yeah. and then you have a ten thirty. Yeah. How did those things shift? How did um, the message uh, shift between all of those? Well, first off. Um, the pre-recording um, this year, th- this this year, this Easter pre-recording was a lot tougher. Yeah. Than than even the weekly. We do it weekly, even than the weekly ones. It was a lot tougher because I'm. It's Easter, and I know it's Easter, and I know I'm. You know, you have to. And when you do the pre-recording, and you just have a camera in the room, you have to sort of mentally understand, kind of shift into what you imagine an actor, a, f- a film actor would be like. You got to know the the, the audience is in the camera yeah so you gotta you gotta sort of play to the camera to use that language um but when the, when it's easter and you're wanting to feel some energy and some excitement about this being easter and there's nobody in the room it was it was tough it was tough to get past it was it was hard when you recorded thursday thursday yeah so you're recording on Monday, Thursday. Yes, and you got the, you got two weighty services yeah. staring you in the in, in the face, and yeah. so uh, it, that was a that was yeah. I didn't think about so that. You're having you're having to jump ahead before going through the Monday, Thursday yeah. prayer vigil, Good Friday services, which which as we just said earlier, is essential preparation. Yeah, spiritually. Even for yeah. us, yeah. <laughs> I want to say. So that. I will say that I, I don't I don't think that the the online recording of that was uh, I, I was that was not my favorite. Yeah, not my favorite experience. I don't I think it came out okay. Yeah, you know, I think I mean I think it was okay. But the live version of it though, yeah, um, you know the A fifteen was 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 nice. It was a nice you know you do feel like you got a real you know kind of warm up uh, warm up to it and the a15 folks loved having full choir there mm-hmm. and by shout out to the choir and yeah. uh, obviously shout out to the, to the worship team in the, mm-hmm. in the in vine but shout out to the choir they were the ones who wanted to be there for the a15 service and they were the ones who wanted to bring back the hallelujah chorus at the end of it all your wife was so funny because yeah. Julie came in at this she heard it going on she slipped in the door and she heard she was all like a kid in the candy store or something she said I gotta hear this this, this, yeah. this I'm so glad we got this back this yeah. year so they were Great yeah. choir was great, and uh, Sam was great in, in leading them. But he, the, even they were saying they said they almost led him in this one. Said no, we are going to be here at eight fifteen. So the folks in eight fifteen were great, and it, it is a bit of a warm up. They had some problems with some some of the instrumentation with yeah. the, the extra music, musicians we had, but but the the ten thirty service, man, yeah. I got gotcha. you. That, 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 that was it. And then, like you said last week, it is a downside of how we do uh, these, you know, simultaneous services because you and I can't be in the other spots. And I would have loved to have oh, come yeah. in and, and, and the yeah, energy was in the house. And, and it was a full there. house. Yeah. Uh, it was just there's a lot of energy in there, and people were just all, you know, as I said, after grins and giggles afterwards, yeah. they, were, they were all smiles that this was fantastic, yeah. which has been the refrain uh, all, you know, all all Holy Week. You know, it's certainly when I saw people on Friday and saw people on Saturday and I saw people, uh, I heard from people after Sunday, you know, my, my phone 
was sort of blew up yeah. after the each of these services with people just saying, "Great, love the best one," you know, loved it. So I'm just forwarding these messages on as much yeah. as I can to encourage everybody. So it was really, it was really something. Yeah. It was really quite something. Yeah. But but the, your question of was it different? Yeah, this year, this year in this setting, the way we did it, it felt particularly um, different uh, to experience the preaching to an empty room mm-hmm. versus preaching to a to a live full room. Well, that ends part one of our special two-part series on Holy Week and our Easter messages. Uh, As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and your favorite podcasting platforms, and be sure to share this podcast with your friends. We'll be back um, later this week with part two of this episode. Have a blessed rest of your day.